Yo, what's up, guys? I'm Elite Shot, aka Sean, and welcome to my part two of my series, Zombies for Dummies. If you guys haven't seen my first part, I decided to start this series because some kid in my one of my live commentaries said I sucked in that if he had a capture card and uh, he could do live comms, he'd make a video to teach kids like me a lesson. So, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try playing zombies without doing a live comm and see how far I can get. And what do you know? I get to wave 36. So yes, welcome to my part two. I hope you guys, I hope, I hope you guys are going to enjoy this series because I enjoyed, you know, getting to wave 36. It was a challenge, and I wanted to show people on how how I did that and how you guys can too. I'll give some tips and tricks on the way up to 36 just to help you guys out and say some things that you guys might not know. It might be a bit hard because this series will be around 20 parts or so, or actually, I think 16 parts, each part being around 10 minutes. It might be a little bit tough to give tips for that long, so I might I might go off on other little topics and things like that. One of my other to one topic I want to talk about is the Shangri-La Easter Egg. The Easter Egg for this map is around I think 13 steps, and I actually haven't yet got a chance to. I mean, I did try it, but I haven't yet done it. There's so many steps, and they are they are pretty uh, difficult. Some of them, at least. One of the steps require you to, like to save a napalm zombie and lead that zombie through the cave. It's just a pain to save the zombie during the wave because it's hard to uh, it's hard to kind of uh, get away from him without dying by other zombies. So it's just a bit of a challenge. And I mean, I did that step, but I, I don't know. Me and my friends tried doing the Easter egg, but we kept getting downed and dying. <laughs> it's just it's just a bit, a bit tough. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube, especially NGT Zombies. They show all the steps and how to do the Easter egg. But even with that, it's still pretty t still pretty hard. Um, yeah, if you guys do the Easter egg, you get, if you didn't know yet, you get the Focus Stone, which gives you all seven perks. And the thing is, even if you get downed with the seven perks and you get revived, you do not lose them. Even if you completely die, say if your friends can't revive you, even if you spawn back to the next wave, you'll still have all the seven perks, so it's pretty nice. And in this map, actually, everyone can get all the seven perks. The thing is, you gotta do the Easter egg four times, which would be a pain in the ass. NGT Zombies, Spider Bite, and and Bentley, and all of them, they uh, they did the Easter egg four times, and they're doing like a, they're doing all these parts, just showing them fooling around, having fun. I mean, it'd be pretty sweet to get everyone's seven perks, but yet yeah, it'd be kind of, it'd be kind of pretty time consuming to get do the Easter egg four times, but. I bet if you do the Easter egg once, it's probably easy to do it again since you know exactly what to do. I actually don't know all the steps by heart. I know up to probably like five or six steps, but I do not yet know uh, how to do the following, the rest of the steps. I can easily just look on their videos, but you know, I for me, I don't mind not do it, getting the challenge. I mean, it's just some gamer score, but it would be cool to get. Oh yeah, and did I mention you can only do the Easter egg with four people? You can't do it with. You can't do it by yourself or with two people, like you could in Call of the Dead, but yeah, you need four players to do the Easter egg. But uh, yeah, as you guys know, the next map pack, I made a video on it, it's going to be called Retaliation. And yes, another map pack, their fourth map pack. Like I said in my other video, they're releasing these map packs out so quickly, I'm not sure if I'm going to buy it myself. I mean, I probably will just because, you know, I say that now, but when it, once it does come out, it's probably just going to look cool, then I'm like, oh, I might get it. I wish they would sell just the zombie map separately, so I don't have to buy the multiplayer maps as well as the zombie map. If they could just sell the, the uh, zombie maps like by itself, that'd be pretty cool, just for like five bucks or whatever. I'm pretty sure they did that for the map Ascension, where you could just buy the zombie map. But I wish they did that for this map and hopefully for the next one. I'm just assuming they're releasing them so quickly because new games will be coming out and people won't. Wouldn't bother buying them if the new games are out. They'd rather save up for the new games so like Call of Duty 3 or er, Modern Warfare 3 and Battlefield 3. I'm probably gonna buy both games, both Modern Warfare 3 and Battlefield 3, just because they both look so cool. Everyone on YouTube and all the videos for the new games coming out, they're all arguing saying, "Oh, Battlefield, Battlefield looks better than Modern Warfare 3 and this and that." And I don't know. I think both games look really cool, and both games offer different play styles and just just a change, you know. I'm sure both games will be amazing, regardless, <laughs> regardless, you know. But yeah, I have I have Battle Battlefield 2 as well as Modern Warfare 2, and I thought both games were great. I can't wait to see what they do in Battlefield 3 and Modern Warfare 3, what they change and new weapons and maps that come out. 
I actually, for Modern Warfare 3, I could care less if it was the same exact game. That's that's one of the arguments people are complaining about Modern Warfare 3. Everyone's saying it looks exactly like Modern Warfare 2. They didn't change anything, but I, myself, I could care less. I would I'm, I'll just be happy with new weapons and new maps and and kill streaks. Just you know, it's just a change from Modern Warfare Modern Warfare 2. And for Battlefield, it'd be pretty cool to see like new vehicles in the game and pro obviously new weapons. But the graphics for Battlefield 3 look amazing. I mean. That's one of the reasons I play Battlefield 3 for the great graphics and great animation and how the buildings fall apart and like I said there's vehicles and stuff like that but I can't wait for that either. I'm gonna get, let me get back to the gameplay a little bit cuz I'm not talking much about that. As you see I just got I just upgraded my dual pistol or my pistol, the pistol you start with, which gives you dual pistols and Mustang and Sally which shoot grenade launchers. I also bought PhD flopper so I would not down myself to my own pistols. And I'm still knifing the zombies because it's only wave 9, and like I said, up to wave 9, the zombies are still one knife with the uh, bowie knife. I forget exactly if I get the ballistic knife, ballistic knife, so I can knife them up to wave 14. I'm not sure if I do, I think I get it early or later, but then it's kind of useless then because the zombies take more than one knife. But I forget, we'll see though. Um, how far am I in this commentary? I still got around like 5 minutes or so, I think. But yeah, um... Now that I have all four perks, all the four necessary perks that I want, I think I'm pretty sure I go for the box now and hopefully get a better weapon. Right now I have the Famous and, like I said, these two pi these dual pistols. Um, I believe I get the Shrink Ray soon, and it's better off. It's better that you go for the box in these lower waves than the higher waves because it does get hard. It gets harder, obviously, to to hit the box with more zombies. So it's better off just to go for the box while there's not a, not that many zombies. And if you are in the high waves and you have to hit the box, you're best off to make a crawler at the end of the wave and be sure that it's the last zombie you don't want to kill a bunch of zombies then try going out there and then more just spawning and killing you so make sure it's the last zombie let's see what I get here yeah. oh I think I get the shrink ray I'm pretty sure I get it get it in this part but yeah the shrink ray I think it's the best gun it obviously is the best gun I'm not sure if it's better than the thunder gun or if it's better than um the wonder Wolf, but it's definitely a good gun all you guys do is shoot the zombies, you just shoot one bullet, say if there's a mass of zombies, it'll turn all those zombies into uh, babies, and yeah, I get it right here. It turns them all into midgets, or babies, I don't know, little freaking things, and if you shoot them with the shrimp ray, and then kick them, you kick them by just running into them, they all fling in the air, so it's it's pretty helpful. It's, it's a really good gun if you get trapped in a corner, or if you're stuck somewhere, it's just a good gun to get out of there. It, that's the main reason I got so high I got the wave 36 I pretty much would only use the shrink rate if I got in trouble or say if there was a perk on the ground not a perk but say if there was a power up that I wanted to grab I'd throw a monkey and then all the zombies go to that monkey and then I just shoot the monkeys with the shrink ray because the monkey bomb does not kill them all so I'd shoot them with the shrink ray and then just kick them all and then get that power up that I needed too bad I'm stupid and I see a nuke or I think it was a nuke yeah and I like an idiot down myself with my own with my own ray gun, I didn't have PhD flopper at the time. I had, I had double tap because I had the HK and I did not have a ray gun, so I just decided to get double tap and shoots faster. I would have had, I would have got PhD flopper if I got ray gun sooner, but I did not get it until like, uh, what wave? Wave like 30 something, honestly. Yeah, I see right there, it's a super good technique for you trapped or something like that. But yeah, like I said, I cannot believe I got to 36. I was so excited. I mean, it was my first attempt after after my life. Oh, it's actually not my first attempt, but I mean, it was my first attempt where I actually want try hard mode. I actually, I actually wanted to get really high because other times I most likely just fooling around, just having fun playing zombies. But this time, I tried really hard. I had a lot of time on my hands. I didn't have anything to do, so I decided to try to get a high wave in zombies. Like you see right here, this is one of the. This is kind of how I start the rape train. I first go right here, then if I get too many zombies or I start getting trapped, I go along the edges. Like you see right here, then I use a shrink ray in case the zombie gets ahead of my path. For some reason, I decided to shoot all the zombies because I knew it was the last bunch of zombies and the new wave would have started. But for for these waves, like in the teens, like 15, 16, 17, all that, I used my shrink ray pretty stupidly. I didn't know why I was just kind of wasting it. I could have just made a rape train that went around the spawn and then just used it in case it got stuck. Like, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do. I wasn't sure how I was going to do a rape train because at the time, I was thinking it was too hard to do a rape train around here since it was kind of compact, but I finally figured out that it gets easier in the higher waves since I'm smarter, I guess. 
But alright guys, we're around 10 seconds left. I hope you guys enjoyed part 2 of this Zombies for Dummies series. And I'll talk to you guys later in part 3. Alright guys, see you there. Peace.